We are rolling. We are rolling. Kelly's behind camera today. Actually, she's going to come in front. Here, come on. You're in the front I'm of the camera as well. I'm technically behind camera. I'm well, technically behind the ironing board as you well. Are, you are. I have to say, you're very well dressed for the ironing board, though. The, the most, the most women who watch this, um, please comment. Do you dress up like this to do um, ironing? It's just posh, a knitted dress. Love. It's not okay. posh frock. It's a knitted dress. Posh compared to what I'm wearing today. And a pair of thick tights. Yeah, well, the reason. Yeah. At it, they're the wrong colour. The reason like. you're not going to be doing this is because I'm going to be making dumplings later and there's going to be flour everywhere, which is one reason why I've got all this rubbish on. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, welcome to Big Ugly World, everybody. Welcome back, Kelly. I am here. I'm just I know, busy doing other just things. Just busy other things. I know. And I'm, I'm kind of taking over the kitchen a bit, which is. Oh, she's lush. Good, it's absolutely it? brilliant. <laughs> I love doing, it. Doing quite well. Um, so today, I thought because you're really busy, um, we got a fairly simple tea we're going to do later. Yeah. But I thought I'd do your pudding. Lovely. Okay, so I'm going to do apple puddle dumpling pudding, I think. Something like that. Apple okay. dumpling puddle pudding. That's the one, apple dumpling puddle. See, that's why she's here, because she's so much more professional than me. So, everything's going to have to go either on the main oven or on the main hob oh. or in the oven, um, because the dish we've got is not induction, so we can't use the induction on induction pop in front of you no. so i will explain what goes on ideally you need um an oven dish which can go from hop to oven yeah this is ours and it's big okay so we're going to do our best with this but as you were saying earlier um if you have to worry about finding the right pan for everything you do you would either have a million pans which you hardly ever use no or you'd never do or it you'd never do it okay if you haven't got a pan like this you can do what we could have done, I guess, was just get in a big frying pan, do this bit, and then pour it into an oven-proof dish. Yeah. We're going to do it all in this because, quite frankly, I can't be bothered. All right? So, this is basically the apple and the saucy bit. Right. Okay? Which we have to do first. We'll put the oven on later because, quite frankly, why you want to put your oven on 25 minutes before you need to do it? That's just a waste of energy. It. It's a waste of energy. Right. So, 100 mils of water. I'll put it on here, but obviously it'll go on there. Okay. okay. So kind of, uh, just a second. Yeah. Do you need me then? I just thought I'd just show you what to do. Okay, can in I... In case you ever decide to do some cooking again. Well, but I've got the iron on, go so on, can I carry yeah, on? Yeah, go on, something set light to the house. Yeah, thank Bye. you. See you all again in a minute. <laughs> oh dear, right. In here, we have some apples, six dessert apples, okay? All the ingredients we listed below, uh, which I have cored and chopped, okay? And sliced up. Uh, they're in a bit of lemon water and I'll just stop going completely brown. We have 75 grams of butter. We have 250 grams of light brown sugar, some golden syrup and a bit of water. We're gonna make a caramel sauce with apples. Okay, so like I said before uh, Kelly left, 100 mils of water goes into your pan. Your butter, 75 grams of butter, goes in the pan as well. And your oh, soft light brown sugar, 250 grams, because you are literally making a kind of fudgy caramel sauce. We've done a few of these now with me. So, remember the millionaire shortbread? Three tablespoons of golden syrup, okay? Obviously, you know, it's a rough guy. This is golden syrup. It'll do its best to mess me up. Oh, getting shakes. Where? Okay, one, two, three. There we go. For some reason my left hand's not as strong as my right. Okay, so this now needs to go onto your hob and it all melts down until it's all, well, until it's literally liquid, I guess. Um, but let all the sugar dissolve and everything and then we'll add the apples. Come back to me in a few minutes. So get this onto a kind of a medium heat, really. The idea is you need to melt all this down and bring it to a simmer. Okay, so it's gonna take a little while because butter and everything is all cold, but it won't take long once it gets started. Give it the old stir just to make sure it doesn't burn. Right then, so now the uh, butter is all melted. Just gonna bring this to a simmer 
in Vorjahr der Atos. Just be careful because obviously you're doing work with hot sugar. So always take your time, don't go mad with the stirring, etc. You don't want this stuff hitting you really. Caramel, skin, not good. Okay, I'll nail down love. So this mixture is now simmering. The idea is now that we uh, put the apples in. I've drained the apples because water and hot sugar doesn't mix very well. So I'm going to pop the apples in. They've just been roughly sliced. We're going to coat them in the mixture and then I'm going to bring it back to a simmer because obviously it will all cool down now. I'm going to let it bubble away in this for about 10 to 15 minutes just so that the apples start to soften but they don't completely lose their structural integrity. That's a good word, structural integrity. Um, whilst we're doing this, we'll make some dumplings. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, time to make some dumplings. Dumplings will be sat on top of this lovely gooey apple mixture which is currently in the pan. I've left the lid on it just to get it going but I'll take it off in a while. So we're going to need self-raising flour, okay? 200 grams of self-raising flour. Now, 100 grams of cold butter. Uh, I'm just using normal salted butter, that's fine, which I've kind of roughly chopped up. Um, ideally it should be cold, but quite frankly, it's quite warm in this house right now with the lights and everything else. A Couple of small little ingredients here, just a pinch of ground cinnamon, just a little dusting of cinnamon. One teaspoon of baking powder. We actually found the proper old fashioned tins. So one teaspoon of baking powder. There we go. Just a little bit of salt, just a pinch of salt. There we go. I'm gonna put all these ingredients bits away. I'm just gonna rub this all together uh, with my fingers, just, just crumbing it together until it kind of forms a wet sand kind of idea. Come back in a sec. So again, just take your time with this, you know, cooking is fun, cooking is supposed to be relaxing, it's not a stressful thing. Just going to rub this butter, flour and spices and everything, all the mixture together. Take your time. Let's be honest, you've got 15 minutes for that sauce to make and if it gets to the point where it's finished, let's take it off the heat. Now I'm nearly there. But I'm just what I show you. There's, there's a few techniques to this. Yes, there's the old fashioned, don't get your palms dirty. There's the this one, which kind of works very well. You're not um, doing anything beautiful right now. And then it's just a squidging it together in your fingers. It'll all be fine. It'll all be fine. So that is kind of resembling grainy sand now, wet sand. So I'm going to get a little bit of milk out the fridge and you can add a tiny bit of liquid to this now. So there we go, hopefully you can see that. That's the uh, damp sand mixture. Got ourselves some milk here, this is just skimmed. Could be used skimmed a lot in this house. Any milk will do. About six tablespoons. Four, yeah, I know I can count over five by the way. Okay. Now, now we've done that. I can use a knife just to start cutting this through. Just cut it through, mix it with a knife. Okay, don't handle it too much now. And this will start to clump together. It's already starting. Just put this milk and these bowls away, and I'll explain what happens next. As you can see, it's already already thickening. I've just eased the lid off this slightly. It's very saucy. That is a warning on the, on the um, recipe that I'm using. I'm getting the recipe from the BBC Good Food app. It's a great app. So I'm going to give us a go. Now, like I said, Use a knife now, just use a normal knife and keep mixing this together until it starts to clump up. It's already doing so as you can see. 
really doesn't take long. When you think you can't clump it anymore, then use your hands, but don't use them until you really have to, because you don't really want to work this dough much at all. Give me a minute or two to get this closer to where I want it to be, and then we'll make dumplings. Okay, so I've tied up a little bit. I need a plate because we're going to put our dumplings on for that for now, because this is going to take a while longer. Some of those slices are quite thick. So, again, just work that to eye. When you think uh, your apples are kind of soft enough, it's done. They're dessert apples, not brownies, because you don't want an apple sauce. So, this is now clumping together very nicely. I'm going to use my hands just to bring this all together. No kneading or anything in this. You don't want to work this too much at all, so I'm just pushing this together, literally just pushing this together. Getting all the scraps that we can, because it'll all stick together. There we go. All the pieces. The, the trick to a light dumpling is to not knead too much and not to work it too much. So, the idea now is to make golf ball side pieces. Well, I'm on a golf channel, should be okay. So, I'm gonna round these up. Like that. They may be slightly big, but I've got a very big pan to try and cover here. So, again, that might not happen. There we go. Better. So, once you've done all this until you've run out of dough to make any more dumplings, we're going to preheat the oven. Let me come back to that in a second. Now, our apples are doing really well. In fact, they're pretty much done. Um, I had this covered up for quite a while, so it hasn't lost much of the juice and the sauce yet. So I'm going to simmer it down for a couple of minutes just to try and lose a little bit. It's going to be very saucy and that's fine. But I just want to take some of it off. Just a little bit of salt, because salty caramel always works. Now I'm not going to put much in but some people like it. Sorry for the wobbly uh, camera shot there. It's very difficult to film and do stuff at the same time. But um, we're nearly there. Okay, so we're pretty much there now. Sauce is done, slightly salted, bubbling away nicely. Dumplings, I managed to make 11. Okay, my gulp was slightly larger than others. I've got big hands. It will be fine. Um, they may get a bit lost in this because it's a really big pan, but hey, it'll be fine. Just gonna put the oven on now. Uh, I believe, if I'm right, it's 160 degrees fan, 180 degrees normal gas mark four. So let's do that, and we'll put these dumplings onto the top of this pudding. Okay, so, whoa. Ooh, yeah. And hot, okay. Now, up to me, love. There you go, thank you, Cameron, I feel like Floyd. Um, recipe does say salt to taste. Now. I wouldn't be tasting that right now because it's going to be molten and lethal. So I sprinkled a little bit of salt on earlier, as you saw. Um, this is what it is, yeah? Now, I managed to create 11 dumplings. I know they're slightly larger than golf balls, but I have big hands. We've already discussed this on camera, I think, earlier. Now, this is going to look lost in this, but the idea now is you put these dumplings in. Oh, maybe I'm so lost. Um, I, yeah, the idea is you leave a bit of space for them, hopefully, to grow a little. Or a lot, I don't know. Okay. That's that. Now, just sprinkle a little bit of golden cast sugar over it. The recipe will say a couple of tea tablespoons, but hey, you know, you just sprinkle a bit on what you want. And we are pretty much done to pop into the oven. The oven is ready to go. Up to me again. Darling, thank you very much. I don't to call all my camera people darling, but I will you. Uh, this goes now in the oven for about 25 minutes, uncovered like this, so the dumplings, hopefully, will pop up a little bit 
and be light and fluffy. Now, if you've ever made a stew with dumplings, you'll know dumplings are very hit and miss, okay? So if they're not light and fluffy, it doesn't really matter. You are not here creating something beautiful. You are not Caravaggio, you are not Leonardo, okay? You are just a cook, doing stuff for your family, and hopefully it'll still taste great. So I'll do a picture at the very end to show you what it's gonna look like, but hopefully it'll be very nice. Once it comes out of the oven, go about 20 minutes to cool down a little bit, because again, you don't want to touch this, it's going to be molten. And then cold cream, double cream, clotted cream, all good. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Please subscribe, please hit the notification bell. Join me on Big Eye Golf, Kelly and I here on Big Eye World. Come enjoy what we do. And uh, take a look at our shop. It's actually called um, Big Eye Golf because the channel's bigger than this one. Uh, but you'll find lots of all our different things that we use on the channel. Um, cookery books, equipment, etc. And uh, if you click on any of those little Amazon links to buy that or anything else after you've clicked on that on that day, um, we'll get a few pennies to help the channel grow. Bye, everybody. Speak soon. Say goodbye, Kelly. Bye.